The following is a presentation of the Redskins Broadcast Network. Welcome to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park. Each week, Redskins Chronicles will take a look at this team's storied legacy, and today we're going to hear from the former Super Bowl champion, Raven Caldwell. But before we do, the Redskins hosting San Diego on Sunday. The Chargers, winners of two straight, coming off a bye. They are 4-3, and three, while the Redskins looking to get in the win column. They are 2-5, and five, and it'll be the annual alumni homecoming game at FedEx Field on Sunday. Love seeing the alums coming back home. And in fact, at Sunday's game, a special celebration honoring the Super Bowl 22 championship team. More on that coming up a little bit later. Last week, the Redskins had their opportunities, but too many turnovers and a lack of scoring gave the Broncos a chance to win the ball game. Here's the highlights brought to you by Ameritel. Peyton looking left, fires Marina open in the flat, inside the 10, knocked out of bounds at the five yard line. Manny takes. Looking to the left, catch is made wide open. Wes Walker in for a touchdown. And the punt by Sad. Kicks this one to the left. Holiday's going to let it hit. Goes inside the five, and it is down at the two-yard line. Great special team play. He downs it at the one-yard line. He's going to give it to Alford. Running to the left, through a hole, across the 10 to the 15, 20. Up the sideline, 25, 30, and out of bounds. Big third down situation here. Robert of the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. Dumps it a little. It is caught. Roy Hallou at the 20. Makes a move down to the 15-yard line. It's a Redskin first down. Takes a snap. He's got time. Looks it over. Flag on the play to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Leonard Hankerson. Quick snap. Manning pumps, pumps. Ball is deflected. It's loose in the backfield. Ryan Arakbo going after it. It's Redskins football. Going to give it to Alfred Morris. Nice cut. Alfred into the end zone. Touchdown. Four man rush for the Redskins. He throws it in. Picked off the edge of the hall. Inside the 20 to the 15. D Hall, the playmaker, all the way in with a touchdown. Redskins score. And into the shotgun. Takes a snap. Inside give to Ball. And the pile moves inside the two down to the goal line. It's a touchdown, Denver. Manning fakes the handoff. Looking it over. Dump off over the middle. Catch made by the running back, Moreno, inside the 20. Manning rolling out, throws to the end zone. It is caught. It's a touchdown. It's a screen pass underneath the Moreno. Weaves three tacklers inside the 25 to the 20 to the 10. Gets hit at the 5, and he's in. Touchdown, Denver. They take the lead. Robert looking, dumps it over the middle. It is picked off, picked off by the Denver Broncos. Quick double screen to Demarius Thomas, weaving his way through traffic to 20-15, and it is a Denver touchdown. Just that quick, they tack another touchdown on the board. Gets hit, throws it up, it's intercepted. Intercepted again. Guys, Robert's down on the ground, rolling around. Robert is down. The shotgun, it is Kirk Cousins in the game. First and 10, fires with the middle, catch made by Jordan Reed. Fumbles the ball when it's picked out of the air by one of the Denver Broncos. Fourth Redskins turnover. One final lead by Peyton Manning. That's going to do it. Final score tonight in Denver. The Redskins fall hard. 45-21. Broncos win. That's how it went last Sunday in Denver. Now Robert Griffin III took some serious shots in that game against the Broncos. And as the team prepared for the Chargers, Robert spoke to the media earlier this week. And here is part of what he had to say. I mean, it's very trying. Um, you know, it's a test, and uh, you, you're going to be put through tests in your life, and you got to decide how you're going to react to them. You can react in a negative way or in a positive way. I choose to be positive. Um, you know, I don't go out there and scream at guys. Uh, and you know, we talked about this before, but uh, my, my way of leading, you know, you have to be positive. A guy drops a pass, he knows he dropped the pass. He's going to make that make that catch for you. If I miss a throw, I know I missed a throw. I'm going to make that throw for them next time. And that's just the approach you have to take towards it, because as soon as you change as a leader. I think guys can see that as well. Uh, and when you change, um, you know, it kind of feels like the ship's sinking. So I'm not going to go out there and I'm not going to change who I am as a person. I'm not going to demand any less out of them and they're not going to de demand any less out of me. 
More on the Redskins and Chargers later. Each week here on Redskins Chronicles, we hear from some of the all-time greats to ever wear the burgundy and gold. And coming up, Amanda Mitchell and Redskins historian Mike Richmond have a conversation with former Super Bowl champion Raven Caldwell. Welcome back to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Amanda Mitchell, joined by Redskins historian Mike Richmond and two-time Super Bowl champion Raven Caldwell. Thanks here. so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Raven, we want to hear today about your entire career, not just your time as a Redskin. We want to know where it all began. Just as far as how I got started in football, um, I, my brother, my brother was my idol. I mean, I wanted to do everything he did, so I just followed him into football, you know. But, you know, any kind of sports, I, I just love to compete. But uh, as far as football, I started when I was five years old, went all the way up through high school and had, you know, fortunate enough to go to University of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, Lou Holtz was there then. That's how long ago it was. I guess I'm showing my age. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, you know. That's okay. We've had some of the original hogs on this show. Oh, I just so see. You're young. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. But, um, you know, when I got to Arkansas, I actually got hurt my third game of my senior year, and I was out for the whole season. And, um, Redskins, was fortunately, they drafted me, they took a chance on me, and actually I came up here and finished my rehab. That's basically, you know, <laughs> as far as my football career. Sure, so uh, going back to, you know, your youth and playing in high school, at what point did you know football was for you and that this could possibly be, you know, a college career or that you could possibly go to the NFL? Um, I think I was in 11th grade. Mm -hmm. um, one of my, the local dentists, you know, I guess he was, he was my dentist, and, um, he asked me, you know, you ever thought about college? And I'm just like, you know, seriously? I'm, I'm like, no. But the whole time he was sending letters to all these colleges saying, you gotta come watch this kid play. And then, you know, he brought me in his office and he had a stack of letters there. I mean, from, a, you know, colleges all over the United States. And that's when I, you know, started thinking about it real seriously. So then you went to the University of Arkansas. Did you keep in touch with him? Who's that? With your dentist. Oh. I, you know, right now, I keep in touch with him through my father. My yeah. father still goes there. He's still, he still practicing in Fort Smith. But um, I think one of, one of the visits that I had was from Lou Holtz. He had called and said he was coming down to visit. And, you know, this is like 6 o'clock in the evening. And so from Fayetteville to Fort Smith, it's only about 46 miles or 50 miles. And, and it happened to be snowing up on the mountain. So 8 o'clock came. No loot. Nine o'clock came. No loot. And about eleven or twelve o'clock at night, I guess he, you know, he made he made the trip. He knocks on the door. You know, my parents are like, "Who just knocked on the door at twelve o'clock?" So <laughs> he came in, and I think he's the kind of guy that he can come in here, have a give you a speech for about five minutes. He have you want to run through a wall, and you know, I, I was very impressed, and I just like you know. That's where I'm going. And then you were drafted by the Redskins in 1986? Yes, actually, um, I had visited all these teams, like, like I guess in January, right when the last bowl was over. Our team went to the, um, I think it was the Holiday Bowl in San Diego. And then after that, teams would fly me every weekend to, to visit. And I visited a lot of teams. I never visited the Redskins. So the day of the draft, when they drafted me, you know, I, I was very surprised. And then, you know, next day got on the plane, came up here and visited everyone. And Bobby Bethel was general manager then. Mm -hmm. And to this day, you know, I, I, I seen him a few months ago and uh, we talk about it all the time. Was it something that Bethard saw in you that gave him so much confidence because you were coming off the injury? Yeah, I was coming off the injury, but the year before, um, Hatfield had just got there and I'd moved from what they call linebacker or bandit to a stand-up end, and, um, but they drafted me as a linebacker. But it was basically a stand-up end, and I guess, you know, he seen film on me, and I guess he was impressed. So <laughs> what was training camp like your first year in the NFL? Training camp, call out Pennsylvania. <laughs> it was boring and hot. And um, when I got off the plane, me and Kurt Gavea, we was roommates for the whole time we was here. You know, we traveled. When we traveled away, we were roommates. But that first year, to be honest, it was scary because I guess 
we had the guy that came came woke you up at five o'clock in the morning to tell you you was cut or you was released. You know, you could hear us. We would be in our, our dorm room and lights out, but you could see feet walking in the hallway. And so we would just watch these <laughs> feet walking in the hallway and we're just like, okay, he didn't stop. <laughs> and so I swear, I, I, we did that for the next three years, you know, we was just like, is he gonna stop? But uh, training camp itself, um, it was tough. It was tough. I mean, like you, me and like I said, me and Kirk we we talked about everything. In that class that they brought in that year, I think almost every guy that they brought in made the team. Mm -hmm. made, made the exception of one or two people. We had Todd Bowles, we had Alvin Walton, Marcus Cook. You know that and Mark Ripon. Mark Ripken, and, and then again, that's when the USFL had folded. Doug Williams, them guys came in. Ricky Sanders, Derek Holloway. There's a lot of guys that have made that team. So Raven, you had six great years here, and we want to hear about all of them. So we'll <laughs> hear more from Raven Caldwell when Redskins Chronicles return. And we're back, Redskins Chronicles with Raven Caldwell. So Raven, you talked us through your first year as a Redskin. Talk to us a little bit more about your life as a Washington Redskin. I mean, it's a dream. I mean, you think about it, being here six years with seven counting injured reserve, um, and you win two Super Bowls. And I mean, that itself, you know, my second year, you know, making the team, going through that season, and having a great run, you know, that Doug Williams had, and, you know, and go, getting to the Super Bowl, and just, you know, being a part of it. I mean, I mean, as people play this game to this day for 16, 17, 18 years, never, never have a chance to see one Super Bowl. Oh and I was fortunate enough to get two. So your first Super Bowl, Super Bowl 22, what was that like? You think about it. It's not like baseball that they got the best out of seven series. Super Bowl is just one game, and everybody's watching that game. And that's, you know, when I walked out there, you know, you can't help but have tears in your eyes. I'm just thinking, you know, hey, we made it. And speaking so. of that game, you had a big fumble recovery. Redskins were down 10-0. and Talk to me about how that was a game changer and how you felt in that moment. Well, it was a kickoff return. Ricky Sanders had caught the ball, and he had fumbled. And to be honest, if you, if you go back and look at the tape, I'm about 15 or 20 yards away from the play, and there's a pile there. And so I walked up to the pile, and you know, the ref didn't say anything. We just, me and Terry Orr, we had went to the bottom of the pile. The guy from Denver had the ball, and we just started twisting the ball. And then <laughs> once we twisted and got it, well, I won't tell you some of the things we did to that guy, but, <laughs> but we got it loose. Uh -huh. And I came up with the ball, and I'm thinking, you know, are they going to reward it to us? And they did. We can just not, not recover that fumble, and they're, they got a chance to be, you know, 20 nothing or 24, 21 nothing, you know, and run away with the game. But I think that was a big play. And the rest is history. You see what Doug did, that, you know, from the second quarter on in. Well, you mentioned 89 as your favorite year. So, Raven, we have some footage from that year. Let's take a look <laughs> at it. Joe Gibbs needed a spark, and he got it from his defense. It's second down and 15. Back goes Aikman again. Good protection this time. Up over the top, Alvin Walton picks it up on the 29. He's back to the far side, 15, 10, 5. Alvin Walton's first career touchdown gave Washington an early lead and a 12-yard run by Ernest Biner sealed the skin's first win of the year. In New Orleans the following week, it was the special teams that ignited a win. Trailing in the final quarter, Rolf Mojenko's 45-yard punt was misplayed and recovered by Dave Harbour, setting up one of Chip Low Miller's three field goals and leading to a 16-14 win. Low Miller finished 89 as the second leading scorer in the NFL and against the Saints booted a career-long 48-yard field goal. With a 2-2 two two record, the Redskins headed back to Washington, still looking for their first home win. And thanks to a big fourth quarter by quarterback Mark Rippon, they would get it. All right, let's see what they do here. 
run that little short pattern in there. Snap to Rippon. He's open. He goes. He's open. Rushes out to the right side on the scramble. Can't find anybody. Stops, throws it into the end zone. Got a man. Touchdown. Art Monk. Rippon back to pass on 33. Lobs it up in the end zone. He's got Clark. Touchdown. Washington Redskins. Well, that was then. Raven, what are you doing now? Well, me and some former players, we, we started a company called Gridiron Unlimited. And what we do, we, it's, a belt, it's a business development company, and also we help, you know, support youth fitness and youth sports. And again, you know, we want to help to fight or eliminate childhood obesity. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing that for three years now. And before that, I was a fitness director at a couple of the um, fitness places around this area. So it's so important to get in the ears of our young people. We wish you the best of luck. We'll check in with the Redskins next and see what they're up to this week when Redskins Chronicles returns. Welcome back to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park. Sunday the Redskins host the Chargers, but it's also the annual alumni homecoming game at FedEx Field. It's great to see some of the all-time greats to wear the burgundy and gold return home. Last year, it was the 80th anniversary celebration for the Redskins, and this year, the Redskins will spotlight the Super Bowl 22 championship team. And earlier this year, the Redskins Broadcast Network aired a documentary, 18 Plays, the story of Super Bowl 22. Significant 18 plays because the Redskins came from behind to beat the Broncos with 35 points in the second quarter in 18 plays. And of course, Doug Williams was the game's MVP most valuable player of Super Bowl 22 is quarterback Doug Williams of the Washington Redskins. The year before, Williams waved off the field in defeat. Now walking in victory. Most valuable player in football's game of games. One of the greatest moments in my life as an athlete, as a player, as a human being, um, to be voted on uh, MVP knowing that it was so many other people from the Ricky Sanders, from the Timmy Smith, on the defense side of football, you could have gave it to the whole offensive lineman. Uh, could have been MVP. But not so much the fact that they announced me as MVP, but to watch my teammates come up to me and, and congratulate me, I think in itself spoke volume for me because you can see the respect that, I, that, that they have for me and I think the most important thing you want from your teammates is the fact that is if they respect you, and I think I saw it that day. We knew that this was a big part of history, and we wanted to be part of history as well. As far as you go back and look at civil rights and so forth, uh, things that people had fought for, we kind of put this into that kind of mold that this was going to be history in the making. And we got very emotional and got very excited, uh, the opportunity to uh, be a part of this uh, uh, history. Everybody rooted for Doug Williams to be great and to be successful. And the best thing about it is Doug answered the call. I mean, have all that pressure on you, being the first black quarterback in the Super Bowl. To get rid of all the myths that people were talking about, like black quarterbacks are not smart enough to play quarterback, they're not smart enough to play that position. He had all that on his shoulders, and to get rid of those myths, basically in two quarters, uh, was fantastic and phenomenal. He went out there and he was a champion for, for all of us to go out there and show people that it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is, doesn't matter how tall you are, how short you are, how strong your arm is, you can go out there and you can win a Super Bowl. Uh, he just happened to do it with a lot of flair with those 18 plays and 35 points. So he's definitely a, a plug, got a spot in history for a long time. Uh, he means a lot, uh, not only to me uh, and to every African-American quarterback out there, uh, but he also means a lot to the Washington Redskins. That was over 25 years ago, and coming up on Sunday, we'll see many of the members of that Super Bowl 22 championship team honored at FedEx Field. We'll also see a very hot San Diego Chargers team. Chargers won two straight, headed into their bye week, and they did it on the arm of Phillip Rivers, who's off to a great start this year. 15 touchdowns, just five interceptions. He's the league's number two rated quarterback, behind Peyton Manning. A tight end and running back have accounted for 82 receptions. Antonio Gates is healthy and a great target for Phillip Rivers. And the former Patriot, Danny Woodhead, has 40 catches and 46 carries, so expect to see him get in the football on Sunday. On defense, the Chargers run a 3-4 just like the Redskins. 
San Diego has 20 sacks, but they've allowed a lot of yardage this season through the air nonetheless. Here's head coach Mike Shanahan with more. Well, I've been watching Philip Rivers, you know, for, for a lot of years. He's an excellent quarterback. And I just smiled when people thought his game was going, you know, the wrong direction. Because you can see just by watching him that, you know, he's a, he's a solid player. More than a solid player. He's probably one of the playing, probably playing as good as anybody in the National Football League right now. But when you're throwing for 74% like he is, uh, you know he feels very comfortable with his supporting cast. Redskins and Chargers, 1 p.m. kickoff at FedEx Field on Sunday. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Redskins Chronicles. I'm Larry Michael at Redskins Park, and we'll see you right here next week.